as a lost as a lost student we uh, have the various concern or every students have the concerns about the whether it is about the environmental concern that uh, there is a lot of environmental pollution etc or the it is about the poverty concern or the corruption concern or any other social issue but when we, okay. when we get out of the college then we get start uh, ignoring our inner consciousness that tell us these concerns and the, by social conditioning we are forced to uh, earn by whatever way so to have the children and get married so but is a hope for us to uh, keep on our mission and not get trapped by this so the way you have modeled the question is we are good people inside the campus we become bad people outside the campus to put it very crudely when in the campus we are good people as students huh? and when we step out we become bad people and social conditioning takes over son why are you in the campus in the first place is it not because of social conditioning will social conditioning start operating only after you step out of the campus or is it operating right now social conditioning is not only after the exit gate it was before the entry gate else you wouldn't have entered the law college at all and it is continuously there between the entry and the exit points in your entire duration of 3 years 5 years 8 years whatever it is it's just that we do not realize that every single action of ours is a conditioned thing that's the thing with conditioning because you are conditioned you will never know you are conditioned hmm so even these thoughts that come to you they come to you because it is trendy to have these thoughts uh, thoughts regarding conservation of of this that flora fauna environment animals species it's 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 a cool thing to talk of these things in the campus you know hmm? when i was in the campus they used to say that uh, <clears throat> there is nobody who is not a socialist while in campus in the campus everybody is a socialist hmm? and if you can continue to be a socialist after you are 25 you are an utter fool between 15 and 25 it's a hep thing to talk of equality revolution this and that till 25 when you are in the campus after 25 the other side of the dialectics should show up no hmm? you should not know uh, when when the turn from communism to capitalism occurs and that's how the society wants you to behave don't you see how the ashram system mandates it says till the age of it says it till the age of 25 you ought to be an obedient student with all the virtues that the ideal student must, must possess so you have, you display all those virtues you are inquisitive you display a social consciousness hmm? you display a concern for bigger causes Hmm? but on your 25th birthday you are supposed to graduate into the next ashram and then you are supposed to worry only about your wife and your kids now you are a grihasth uh, <laughs> you understand grihasth hmm? so so that's how you have been conditioned 
even now if if the the, the kind of things you might be having in your campus they are not an expression of uh, people's freedom or liberation those things happen because they are supposed to happen for example uh, some caste oppression takes place somewhere in the country and in your college in your campus uh, there is a there is a candlelight procession hmm? these are cool things they must happen the s- the same fellows who are holding those candles today would be circling around bigger fires within an year or two the candles would have become very dim by that time no candles so do not take your uh, passions in the college too seriously they don't mean anything hmm? everybody is an activist within the safe four walls of the campus everybody is a revolutionary when the time is right the 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 you would probably be having one cell or some section dedicated to planetary concerns hmm? the species are getting extinct there is biodiversity loss and there is climate change and there is overpopulation and the ones who would be yelling hard on overpopulation would be mummies and daddies within 2 3 years of passing out so that's the way the game is played everything has its due time and place campus is the place to raise slogans and grahast jeevan is the place to raise babies so you do what is mandated had you really understood who you are and what it means to be alive and what it means to be alive as a mortal being on this planet how could you have forgotten those concerns truth if seen cannot be unseen had you really understood something how could it become less meaningful for you later on but but that does happen and that simply means nothing was ever understood a trend was being followed a custom was being adhered to Hmm? does that not astonish you our fickle ways our centerless lives how we profess love towards one cause and very soon all love is forgotten from campus to the corporate colon raising slogans to raising babies let it hit you a little hmm? please wonder on this thing 
what kind of fickle people we are. Should we not even wonder on this? Hmm? Probably we will not wonder on this because that's not the social mandate, right? But 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 is a hope for us to choose the right path and then stick on that because uh, most of the time the fear comes toward that right path. How do you successfully choose all the wrong paths without exception? That cannot be a coincidence, right? You already know some formula. Had it been just coincidental, then there should have been some probability towards choosing the right path as well, just randomly. Even if a small probability, let's say 1 by 6, 1 by 10, 1 by 100. How do we unfailingly ensure that we choose only the wrong path every time? That cannot be a coincidence. There is a formula there. So we know the right path, right? And our formula therefore is built around avoiding the right path. And the formula is successful, it yields results. We choose anything and everything apart from what is right. And that can be done only when there is no need to choose. Only when all our choices have been already made. That in Vedant is the way of Prakriti. The Great Mother has already laid out all your choices, ready-made, pre-decided for you. She loves you so much, she leaves no decision-making for you. He says, I, I love my baby. Why should I put him in the needless hassle of decision making? I'll make all the decisions for him. He simply has to live by the decisions I've already made. You are interested in liberation. That was your first question. So liberation is freedom from pre-decided ways of living. A lot is taken as obvious, understood. We surrender, we bow down, and we take certain things as final. We don't challenge them. Somebody wrote a script, and that becomes our life story. We don't challenge it. Liberation simply means there is not only life outside the script, there is joy outside the script. You can be happy beyond your imagination. You can have endless happiness outside the script. Don't be afraid. You know how we look at this thing called liberation. 
we look at it as if we are doing it a favor by looking at it. <coughs> we say, you see, all the happiness lies in the path of Mother Prakriti. That's where all the happiness lies. So I'm actually taking a hit by even looking at liberation. Because if I'm looking at liberation, I'm looking at lack of happiness, right? That's our attitude. So outwardly, we might behave as if we are respectful towards Vedant, as if we are grateful to our teachers. But some point of us internally believes we are doing Vedant and the teachers a favor by looking at them. The calculation is obvious. The calculation says, you know, I am a creature of happiness. I am born to be happy. And happiness lies in the path I am already traversing, which is the path of the script given to me. Hmm? By the grand old mummy ji. Biology and society. So, I am already on the path of happiness. But just as a gesture of respect, I, I look at Vedant, I look at uh, all the nice sounding things the old sages said. So I look at them and when I look at them, I'm, I'm, it's at a cost, the cost of happiness. No, it's not at a cost of happiness. If you look at them, you will get happiness. You are terribly unhappy right now. And unhappiness is always accompanied by foolishness. Foolishness says, no, I am not unhappy. I am actually happy and if I leave my unhappiness, then I will become unhappy. Who is happy here? There is nobody who is really happy. Yet people stick to their ways. There has to be an assessment problem somewhere, right? The sensor is malfunctioning. The car is moving at 10 kmph. And the sensor has gone bonkers. It's displaying 80. You have no happiness, but you have been conditioned to think that this lack of happiness is called happiness. And since I am already happy, if I look at Vedant or spirituality or wisdom, I will become unhappy. And therefore the fear. You said, I feel afraid when I look at alternate paths in life. That's the reason. Else there would have been no fear. You think you have something that Vedanta will take away. That free life will take away. Just surely the free life will take away something. But what is it? Not your happiness. That you anyway don't have. It will take away your bondages. Yes, anything? Uh, sir, can I ask the question, next question related to this? Yes. Sir, uh, as we have witnessed uh, on 26th of December, the government declared the Bal Beer Divas uh, Bal on the martyrdom of two sons of Guru Govind Singh. So, they were they were the uh, bricked alive at the age of six or nine, so they they have the option to uh, save their life, but they uh, they stand firm and the fearless. So 
as you have told that we are born slaved by the prakriti so how can uh, one can at such a little age can be so firm and the fearless mm. their father was the guru either have your father hmm, of the stature of the guru or accept the guru as your father there is no other way the first option is always by chance you cannot choose your biological father hmm? the two extraordinary kids were supremely lucky right they had a very special father but not everybody can have a special father so what does one do then realize who you are and see that we all need to be fathered even if you don't actively search for a father at least acknowledge that you are a kid that will prevent you from needlessly taking adult decisions it is very difficult to avoid the anupam if you may but i'll say something the way a kid is born the path is already well laid out for him or her without a special effort you cannot avoid your destiny your destiny is to be born like a like a pawn in the scheme of evolution play or required biological role and then disappear after a few decades and that's what each of us would inevitably end up doing unless you make special efforts <laughs>